Welcome to the job, Mr. Speaker. Now you, you got to get to work. We have a new House Speaker. I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, but uh, Congressman Mike Johnson is, the now, uh, is now the new Speaker of the House of Representatives. Uh, I've known him uh, for a few years. He's not been in Congress that long. Uh, conservative guy, constitutionalist, God-fearing, that really drives the left crazy. I don't know if you saw his opening speech uh, where he reminded everyone sitting in that chamber uh, that they all are ordained by God in terms of their leadership and uh, whether they recognize it or not is another matter or act accordingly. Uh, but certainly his prayerful um, reflection on his new position uh, hopefully is a, a, a good indicator of where he'll proceed and where uh, what next he'll do as it relates to the challenges facing him. And the challenges are significant. And those of you who have been following me uh, on, on uh, the weekly update here or on social media, uh, and you've seen my colleague Chris Farrell raise these issues as well on his On Watch program, the uh, issue is whether or not Congress is going to continue to fund the assault on our republic, right? Whether they're going to continue to fund the effort to try to jail Trump illicitly uh, that is happening out of the Justice Department and also is happening out of New York and in Fulton County, Georgia. Uh, whether they're going to continue to fund the censorship and the abuse of our military, you name it, the invasion uh, are they going to continue to fund that uh, or not? And that's the test. That's the challenge. And it's something that Speaker Johnson is going to have to deal with. Uh, and this is my response initially to his selection. And I think I um, summarized it pretty directly. There it is, the U.S. Capitol. New leadership up there, Speaker Mike Johnson. Judicial Watch congratulates you, sir. But you've got a lot of heavy lifting to do. You need to release those January 6 tapes as quickly as you can. The McCarthy Congress has been hiding them from us. You've got to release them now. You need to defund the Biden border invasion now. Our country's being destroyed. Frankly, you need to impeach him for the Biden border invasion. You need to defund the Biden scheme to rig the elections by trying to jail Trump and other innocent Americans. You need to do that now. You need to defund the Biden censorship of American citizens now. You need to defund the abuse of our military now. We can't wait till next year. Frankly, we can't wait till next week. The sooner you act, the better. God bless you and God bless America. Well, do you agree with me? I know I agree with me. Uh, the issue of the January 6th videotapes. Uh, the Speaker of the House previously, uh, McCarthy, the McCarthy Congress, uh, told the court recently that no American should have access to the tapes. They told the courts that uh, the uh, Congress has sovereign immunity. Uh, the tapes are all security info. Even if we could get access to them, they shouldn't be released because they should be withheld as security info. Plus, there are a bunch of emails that uh, the U.S. Capitol Police uh, leadership have that they don't want to turn over as well. So, Speaker Johnson uh, should keep the commitment that McCarthy initially kept or promised, right? And release the tapes. Negotiate a settlement with Judicial Watch. Turn the tapes over to us. Let us win. So, that's a big test. And then there's a test in a few weeks which is the period in which this continuing resolution ends. And I, I want to I go through it with you a little bit because it's worth highlighting uh, because they rely on you not knowing about the budget process in order, and, and they being the uniparty, the deep state, the establishment, what have you, that uh, they rely on you not knowing about it so they can just slide through everything they want to slide through. And so the continuing resolution that McCarthy, in my view, wrongly signed on for, essentially fully funded everything that's been happening in Washington with no reform, no restrictions, right? And in theory, the way it's supposed to work, and <laughs> the, the members of the House uh, get together and they pass an appropriations bill by agency or two or three, depending on the bill. And these appropriations bills, 12 or 13 in total, 
they similarly get passed by the Senate with their priorities. And if there are policy differences that are funded under law through these appropriation bills, they're supposed to be hammered out with, through, uh, with each other. Now, obviously, the House of Representatives, in theory, controlled by Republican, would be passing appropriations bills that would hopefully do some of the things that conservatives want done in terms of defunding the Biden border invasion, defunding censorship, defunding the, cent the uh, tax on Trump, et cetera. Now, of course, Democrats running the Senate, and frankly, a lot of Republicans don't want to do any of that. So if they can't agree, there's no money. And that goes back to this continuing resolution scheme that the left uses to fund their operations every year, which is our gargantuan spending bills called either continuing resolutions, you've heard omnibuses or minibuses, some people kind of uh, vulgarly call them crappy losses, but that's what happens. They just put everything off to the last minute and they don't give anybody any time. And since no one can agree on anything, they just agree to keep on spending what they spent the previous time, previous year, with a little bit extra. So obviously that's not the conservative way to approach things, certainly if you're looking for some reform and a reflection of the policies that the voters have who actually gave the Republicans the majority in the House. And from Judicial Watch's perspective, we want, you know, uh, and I think you want, some reform here, some anti-corruption uh, 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 statements through this continuing resolution process or this omnibus process or this appropriations process. So Speaker Johnson suggested that if there's going to be a continuing resolution again, because they're not going to have these appropriations bills done by the middle of next month. It's not going to happen. Certainly even if the House has it, the Senate won't proceed because there's little political interest in doing it on the Senate. They'll just, they're happy just to get what they got last year, plus a little bit more, the Democrats and Joe Biden. Uh, but Speaker Johnson suggested that if there is to be another continuing resolution to give people more time to do what, I'm not sure, but anyway, that there would be some restrictions put in place, right? Which was good, right? So maybe he's listening. Maybe he wants to do some reforms through this continuing resolution. He's going to tell Democrats and encourage his colleagues in the House to tell uh, the liberals and the leftists who are ruining uh, the government that if you want the government to, quote, be funded, there are certain things that are going to have to happen. There's going to be a red line or two or three or four or five, but at least one. Who knows? Maybe they'll say, if you want more government funding or the government to keep on getting money, we're going to have to secure the border and we're not going to fund our own destruction by giving the Biden administration money to move millions of illegal aliens into the country. Imagine if that was the line. Or imagine if the line was, you're not going to spend money to try to jail Trump and to the degree your cutouts in Fulton County, Georgia and up in New York City are relying on federal money in part to do their schemes against Trump, we're going to cut that off too. Imagine that. You're not going to censor Americans. Imagine that with federal tax dollars. So the question for Republicans is, and honest conservatives, are they going to do anything? Is there anything that they be willing to fight over? And if they uh, in, and, and if it doesn't work out the way they want, would they be willing to shut the government down over it? Is there anything they're willing to make a stand on? And if you want them to make a stand, you need to call your members of Congress, and you've got to do it. I tell you, the only reason Speaker Johnson is Speaker Johnson was because of your activism and the activism of countless millions of Americans who flooded the phone lines on Capitol Hill. Now, is, is Speaker Johnson going to do everything I want him to do? Of course not. Is he going to do everything you want him to do? Of course not. I mean, that's, that's just politics, right? But the fact is, there is a much more conservative speaker who shares a lot of our values for the first time in, in that key position, thanks in large measure to the activism of you, dear follower, dear viewer, dear Judicial Watch supporter. And if you want to follow up on that and leverage that success 
for more policy successes, certainly in the area of transparency, government accountability, et cetera. Holding Biden accountable for his corruption. I'm going to get into that. Then call your members of Congress at 202-225-3121. 202-225-3121. And uh, we're, we just, I'm, I'm congratulations, Speaker Johnson. I think he's a great guy. I wish him the best. But we got work to do, right? As I said in that clip, we got work to do. Our, our country is tottering. I run hot and cold. Is the republic fallen or not? I don't know what you think. But either way, there, it's an emergency situation in, in what's happening here in Washington, D.C. with the abuses, uh, the corruption in the White House, the invasion. And of course, we have all these national security issues that are made worse by Biden's personal corruption. So welcome to the job, Mr. Speaker. Now you, you got to get to work. And there's, unfortunately for him, there's going to be no honeymoon. It's, it's, it's got to be immediate. I mean, the crisis is that significant. And if you share my views, maybe you don't share my views. But the least you should do is share your views with your members of Congress at 202-225-3121. And, and as I've discussed with you previously, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the other work we're doing, you know, we'll keep on pushing in terms of the government accountability and transparency and ethics and such, whether it be uh, getting information on the censorship, the invasion, uh, the COVID scandal, which hasn't stopped, the Biden corruption. Uh, Judicial Watch will do our independent work. Election integrity, Judicial Watch will do our independent work. But Congress has got to get, get it together. Because everything that's terrible is happening is happening with the help of Congress and the full funding of Congress. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.